Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now we're inside today, I can't be dealing with any more worms, and we're going to be taking a look inside this HP NV PC, possibly one of the best deals that I think I've ever found for this channel. So this cost me £80 here in the UK, which I think is the equivalent to about €90, Euros, $95 US dollars, and apparently this thing has an i7 inside. This thing is a little bit rough around the edges, but on the inside, I'm sure it's perfectly fine just like myself in a way. So let's crack this thing open, see what we've got inside, see if it works. And uh, before we do that, actually, I just wanna quickly mention how I find deals like this on sites like eBay. Now this was actually listed as four parts or not working. And that is a great way to find cheap bargains. Now that might mean or it might sound to you like the computer is completely broken, but a lot of the time I found that for parts or not working can just mean that the PC doesn't in include an SSD or a hard drive. So yeah, you can find some right bargains looking under the for parts or not working section under condition on eBay. And that's where I found this old thing. But let's take a look inside, see what we've got, see if it works, and then try out a few games. Maybe upgrade the graphics card as well or try it with something a little bit different if the one in here isn't quite up to scratch. So let's take a look. First of all, this is an HP build, so of course it's sort of backwards in a way. The side panel opens from left to right as opposed to from right to left. And as you can see, not the prettiest PC on the inside, but what... Something's just broken. What we do have... Here is, I think, a standard motherboard. Now, in a lot of these pre-builds, purchasing one can sometimes be a bit risky because you don't know if you're going to get a proprietary motherboard full of proprietary connections. Sometimes this stops you swapping out the PSU. Sometimes it stops you being able to change the motherboard if it gets broken. But it looks like everything is of standard form factor here, which is always a bonus. So first of all, we have a pretty ugly graphics card. In the editing part, I'll, uh, I'll take this out and show you some close-up shots. This is an R9 360, I believe, and it's an OEM one, so not the prettiest card available on the market, but if it works, then we should be able to get a little bit of money back for it if I decide to sell it. Now, atop the motherboard, we have an i7, apparently 6700 all of this will be confirmed when we turn it on in a minute it's pretty clean on the inside not too much dust in here we've got a rear fan at the back it's got one of those weird sort of laptop dvd drives in here as you can see the hard drive is indeed missing as described and the power supply is 300 watts now what's surprising despite the relatively low power on hand we do have two six pin connectors one of them is actually a six plus two pin connector this is of standard form factor as well so we can swap it out if necessary what we'll do now then is see if it fires up into the bios confirm the specs and then try out a few games so let's take a look okay so i decided to just hook my ssds up to the machine straight away and see if it will boot right into windows 10. sure enough the hp booted into action and after spending a few minutes getting my devices ready it did eventually make its way into Windows 10 and that gave me a chance to look at the task manager and see what components we had. As you can see the i7-6700 is in here, a 4 core 8 threaded chip. Now you might think that there'd be DDR4 to accompany this but no, this Skylake processor apparently supports DDR3 or in the case of this HP machine it does which was quite unexpected. We've also got the R7 360. Now I didn't really buy this machine knowing that the GPU would do well. I had a feeling it would struggle and it will do as you're about to see but there is definitely potential here and that's what attracted me to this machine more. The fact that this i7 can support a much better GPU. But let's take a look at some gaming results first of all with the included R7 360. The first game I tried was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This did actually run quite well with reduced settings and I was able to remain somewhat competitive, though of course there will be a few issues. This card does support DX12, so it will actually start and run 
every game that you throw at it, but you will have to make some serious graphical sacrifices. That's especially true with Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered here. Now, from what I remember, the R7 360 and the R9 360 are very similar. I think one's an OEM version of the other one, so you might see this listed as an R9 360 with this PC, should you find one of these, but it's essentially a very similar thing, and in 2023, performance is going to be identical. I think these are pretty much identical cards. Whether one has more cores than the other, I can't quite remember, but either way, as you can see here, and the one we've got included with this system, the R7 360, it is going to struggle, and in combination with this i7, it's going to be maxed out most of the time. The 2 gigs of VRAM doesn't help. That said, if you do manage your expectations, you can make things work, especially if you don't mind just 30 FPS. Having said that, the i7 is really being underutilized here. When HP first put this machine together, it might have been a better combination, but these days, yeah, it's it's definitely the GPU that has aged worse. The 4-core 8-thread i7 is still somewhat capable, and we'll pair it with a faster card shortly to show you that. Forza Horizon 5 with the R7 360 also ran pretty well, to be honest. Um, it is just noticeable that the card is maxing out pretty much all of the time. It runs fairly cool and quiet though, which is a bonus. And Forza Horizon 5 doesn't look too bad at 900p with the low preset. We could have gone lower, but I didn't think it was worth it. CSGO is of course more reliant on CPU power, so it will run fine here, but it will be interesting to see if a faster GPU will actually improve this frame rate a little bit more. So let's check that out right now. Now excuse the terrible cable management, but this is just an example of what you could potentially do. As I mentioned, this PC does support a standard form factor power supply. So I slotted my 600 watt one into here. Cables are all over the place because this isn't modular. And I also stuck my RTX 3050 in the system. I'll have to actually find a different GPU and PSU to bring this all together as a more budget focused build. But for now, I wanted to give you an example of what the i7-6700 can do in combination with something that is more capable. If we jump back into the same games then, and you're going to see now that things are much improved. In fact, in some situations, it looks as though the CPU has become the bottleneck. Not in Call of Duty here, but in a few other titles. Having said that, the card isn't being fully utilized, so we could definitely benefit from a faster CPU now. But that's why I'm going to slot a different card into this system at some point to bring it all together as a more sensible and real world budget gaming build. The improvement continues into Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. This one is pretty CPU intensive, so this time the CPU is maxing out, but this is a welcome improvement over what the i7 and R7 360 could deliver previously. Elden Ring is also running pretty well, but again, the older CPU architecture, the game doesn't quite agree with. I found that before with some other chips as well, but this is much better than what we were getting beforehand. Forza Horizon 5 is now playable at Full HD as well. This is a really well-optimized game, so it's no surprise that it runs with over 100 frames per second a lot of the time when using this combination, and the i7 has no issues here. The 16 gigs of DDR3 is a weird one. You would expect to find DDR4 in a lot of Skylake systems, but I guess maybe as part of cost cutting or whatever, some manufacturers just used older and slower memory. Finally then we have CSGO again, now this did see some improvement actually, even when running with the same low settings, I guess that extra GPU power does help, even though this is more of a CPU intensive game, and the i7 isn't going to have a problem with it. A more powerful GPU will actually work wonders if you want to turn the settings up a little bit too, and I'm not quite sure what we'll pair this with yet in a future video to bring this together as a more real world budget build, but I hope you've enjoyed this initial look at the HP Envy though. A pretty interesting system from back in 2016, December 2016 I believe, according to the BIOS. It would have been a system that was pretty capable back in the day, but the graphics card certainly would have aged a lot quicker, and I think that was proven in this video. It's a shame because the i7 does have a lot more potential, as seen when I paired it with the RTX 3050, but we'll be finding a different card to pair this system with before I sell it on. So thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.